Hey guys, there's nobody in here yet. <laughs> um, this is a just literally like me coming on randomly because I was feeling super inspired. So um, earlier I put out a post asking people to ask me questions, right? I wanted people to just ask questions and I like to answer. And um, one of the questions really stuck out to me. So I have 15 minutes before I have to go into work. So this is just literally gonna be really fast and I'll keep a replay for you guys. But basically, one of the questions that someone asked me was um, tips for budgets. And I don't know where this whole urge to want to come and do a video about it came up. Um, thanks, love. Um, but basically, doing a budget has been something I've been doing for the last two years. So um, I wanted to just make a video about my tips for that because 30 second um, Instagram stories isn't enough for me to just like put my word out there. So if you want to catch the replay later, um, you can. But this is, uh, this is just going to be me going into detail about budgets and tips for budgets and how to save money. So hi, you guys. Okay, so as you guys know, a little backstory. My husband and I were renting an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment for two years. We were paying $1,200 a month. So it was twelve, about $1,225 per month for rent. And then we decided, you know what? We're just throwing our money away. We will never own an apartment. We're just throwing our money away, and we wanted to get a house. So we moved in in 2017. We moved in January to my parents' house. We moved back home and we decided we need to pay off all of our debts. So we had about maybe $20,000 worth of debt, credit card debt, my wedding ring debt, um, his school loan debt, um, and the tires for the car that he had just bought debt, like all this bullshit debt, right? $20,000 worth. Um, and so we were like, we need to pay this off before we could start saving for a house. So all of 2017, we were paying off our debt. And the way that we did it was, this is that dream, the ideal thing. When we moved back home, my parents did not charge us rent. So we were paying zero rent. So what we did was we took the $1,200 that we were paying rent at the apartment, we were putting that straight into our bills. And I mean, we were like chugging in, like there were times where TCM was bringing in maybe five, $600 for the month. All of that five, $600 was going into my credit card to pay off the damn credit cards. So needless to say, by the end of 2017, we paid off about, I would say 95% of our debt. Um, we still have one credit card remaining where we have a balance of 5,000 on it. But um, we did a thing where we transferred that credit card balance to a new credit card that we opened with 0%. So we were not getting any finance charging. We're literally every money, all the money that we're putting into that credit card, it's going all the way through to it. So <laughs> we may not have the credit card paid off by the time we own a house, but that's okay because I would rather have a $5,000 credit card balance than a fucking like, I don't know, I think it was like 12000 we owed. I don't know. It was a lot. Um... So anyways, the first tip is if you have the ability to move back home, live with parents, suck it up, do it, that is one way to pay off your debts. There is nothing wrong with that. That's what we did. Second tip is you have to still pretend. If you are living somewhere rent-free, pretend like you are paying rent, okay? Because <laughs> it is so easy to see, oh, I have suddenly thousands of dollars free to do whatever the fuck I want. But if you're not putting that money away, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything for yourself. So the second tip I have is to um, use the money that you normally would have done for rent. Put it in your savings account or put it in your credit cards or whatever the fuck, okay? Second tip is taxes. If you were working and you were getting a tax return, whatever money you get back from your taxes, as much as you want to spend that for yourself, take a little piece for yourself because it's hard working money, right? Take a couple hundred for yourself, but the rest of that tax return money that you get, put it in your fucking savings or put it in your credit card, pay off a debt or whatever. That's another thing my husband and I did. So we got money back from taxes. We pretty much kissed 2000 of it goodbye and it literally went into the credit card but it was the best feeling because that's what closed it out so then fast forward to January 2018 my husband and I paid off our debts and um, we were like okay we have to start saving for a house because we are we were already one year living at home and I was already at my wits end I'm like I can't do another year 
but I figured, you know what? It's a blessing. They're letting us live there without paying rent. We need to do this and take advantage of it because this is the one and only time I want to ever have to move back home. So January 2018, my husband and I, even though we had the, it was at the time the balance was, um, I think it was like 7,000 on the credit card. We, we figured, you know what? We're just going to start pay making payments on the credit card, but we're going to start saving money. So what we did was the $1,200 that we would pay a month for rent at the apartment, we decided to start putting that away into savings. So every month, my husband was putting, he's been putting $1,200 every month from January into the savings account. Now, there was one or two months where we didn't because he had his car took a shit. <laughs> his poor little old Camaro took a shit. So he ended up having, he's borrowing my dad's truck, his dad's truck right now, which is a gas guzzler. So the gas, we've been paying more for gas. So there's been times where he's not putting, um, um, he's not putting, six hundred dollars per paycheck away in the savings he's actually putting maybe 500 so at least i told him as long as you're putting a thousand dollars in the savings account a month i'm happy so um we are still pretending like we're paying rent even though it's just going into the savings and that's how we've been saving for our house this year if we didn't have debt <laughs> we probably would have already had um maybe close to twenty four thousand dollars in our savings account for the house but unfortunately, we had debt and we needed to get rid of that. But it's a, it's a good feeling when you get rid of it. So the other tips I have for you guys is that let's say you don't have the ability to live at home, to move back home with parents and you don't have the, 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 the ability to not to be rent free somewhere. Then another tip I have is check out, literally just go for the first month, look at your bank statements and look at all the bullshit of money that just goes to crap and look and see where can you cut corners because that's what i did my husband and i actually both did it because he he thinks i spend more on bullshit than he does which he was true he was right <laughs> so last month i looked at my statement and i honestly you guys all of my bullshit my bullshit money goes to starbucks number one starbucks my nails that's number two and the big one was food because i don't cook I don't like to cook so if I'm not cooking obviously I'm eating out which is very bad I'm trying to break that habit but it's a bad habit so my husband his habits were too the same thing take out in and out it was like a lot of in and out we spend so much money on food going out food <laughs> And so I told him, when we are starting to budget, especially when we have a mortgage, we really have to learn to not spend so much money on food takeout. We have to, we're gonna be cooking at home. <laughs> Beans and rice on tortillas is what we're gonna be doing. So um, that's another tip is take a look at just just your the, uh, just a month, the last month, What did where was your money going? How much money were you spending on bullshit? And can you cut that out or can you minimize it? So basically, my Starbucks intake has been minimizing, you know, I'm not going as often, you know, and I have the little Starbucks card. I don't know if you guys do that where you could put money on your card and then you just use what's on your card. I've been doing that. I'll put 20 bucks on my Starbucks card and I tell myself $20. It's going to last me for the week. It goes fast because Starbucks is fucking expensive, right? <laughs> but I tell myself, I don't want to spend more than $20 a week on Starbucks. Um, I want to eventually get to the point where I'll only spend $20 for the two weeks on Starbucks. But that's hard right now because I love it so much. The other thing is um, like little things. Like I said, for me, it's takeout. It's eating out. So another way to break that is going grocery shopping and buying foods that you could reheat later and, you know, cooking in bulk so that you have a lot of leftovers. So that's another thing. That's that's my little thing I got to learn how to do. The other bullshit money was my nails. Um, so instead, I at the time, you guys, I was going every two weeks to get my nails done because it's something that I love to do. It's my pampering time. But now I've been going every three weeks and sometimes only like every four weeks. So, <laughs> so I'm not going twice a month. I'm only paying now the, the, my nails once a month. So that's kind of freed up, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. Um, 
but there's like there's ways to do it so if you don't have the ability to live somewhere rent free then you can totally find ways where you can free up money and chances are it's going to be in your playtime money it's going to be where you're spending food it's going to be you know you're a little you're if you like to get your nails done or you get your hair cut or whatever it's going to be somewhere there and it's just all about minimizing it um and then what else what other tips do i have for you guys because i got to go into work soon um, I would say just putting every little bit counts. Some people think, oh, I got to put hundreds of dollars away. No, even if you're putting a hundred bucks a month, that's better than nothing. One, something is better than nothing. So once it's, once it hits your savings account, it shouldn't be coming out unless it's an emergency. Once your money is in your savings account, it should not come out. So that's a big one. Um, sometimes even opening a separate account so you won't be so tempted to touch it. The other thing is, is that when you start seeing your savings account building and the number gets bigger and bigger, you are less inclined to pull from it because you don't want to mess with it. Same thing goes when you pay off your credit card. When you see that number at zero, <laughs> you will be less inclined to put money on it. And that's my other tip. Just because you zero out your credit card and you pay it off doesn't mean you can't use it. Use it, you know, you wanna still use your, your credit card, but make sure what you are buying is one, worth it, and two, you already have the money to pay it off. So, for example, I bought leggings from Torrid the other day because I hadn't used my Torrid credit card in a long time. I don't want it to close out because that's credit that you're building. So I bought a pair of leggings for on sale. It was like 20 something dollars I spent. I immediately transferred that 20 bucks into the Torrid account. It's already paid off because I don't want debt to build up. So it's like, it's little things like that. Just make sure you're, what you are gonna buy, you already have the money to, to pay it off. Um, what else? Um, I would say also just dissecting your paycheck. You know, what, I, what my husband and I do when we budget, we write it on a piece of paper. I will write on, on the paper how much I bring in a month after taxes are taken out after taxes and how much my husband brings in a month after taxes and then we make a list of all of the necessities how much is going to the savings account how much do we have to pay for bills those are necessities the bills that you can't get rid of there's bills that you can get rid of and that's like you know little fun things that stuff maybe you don't need anymore you know um if you pay for cable, maybe you don't need cable anymore because you have a Netflix account, whatever, like stuff like that. But there's usually necessities and it's like gas, it's your insurance, it's your, um, what's another necessity, your phone bill. Those are necessities. Those are things you can't get rid of. So automatically those are part of your budget. And then when you see how much money is going to those bills, plus my mortgage or my rent, or like for us, it's, we call it our rent, but it's, <laughs> it's our savings rent. Um, then you see how much money you have freed up and then you figure, okay, my grocery money, you know, my fun money, always have fun money. You guys, you should always have money to go out and have fun. You work hard for your money. You should always enjoy it. But don't over enjoy it to the point where you don't have anything left over and you can't save. So little by little, if, you're, if your goal is to pay off your school loans, little by little, just, you know, pick at it. The other thing when you're paying your credit cards off, you know how it's like you have your minimum payment? Never just do the minimum. Always do minimum plus more. So what I used to do, would I would do the minimum plus 20 bucks if that was all I could give. And then give, and you can also do two payments. Just because you do one credit card payment for the bill doesn't mean you can't put more money into it later. So do the bill payment, right? And then let's say maybe you're three days before your next paycheck and you, you're like, oh shit, I have 60 bucks in my account. Okay, I don't need that 60 bucks right now. Let me put 30 of that into my credit card. Put 30 of that into the damn credit card or into your savings, save it. Because what are you gonna do with that money? That extra 60 bucks most likely you're gonna go treat it on a piece of pizza you're gonna go have some drinks with your friends <laughs> that is how you are gonna start minimizing your debt that is how you're gonna start building your savings so you got to think that way um, I used to do like two two bills two credit card payments in a single month because I had the money freed up so it's just a matter of just because you pay the bill doesn't mean you can't put more into it, especially if it's a credit card bill or a school loan bill or whatever. You can always put more than you need to, but never cut yourself too short. Always give yourself that little like, um, 
I call it like a pillow to land on if shit hits the fan <laughs> because you never know something can happen you you could you know get a flat tire or some god forbid your car breaks down or whatever um but just always you know be smart but always enjoy your money too because your money is your own hard work so I'm like a big on that it's to me it's like what's the point of working so hard if you're not going to enjoy it right so always make sure you're enjoying yourself have something that you do for you which for me it would be my nails but at the same time make sure you're putting some away for your future <laughs> and you know and and you may not be able to put so much money away, but even if you put, like I said, even if it's girl, even if it's $10 out of your paycheck, who cares? That's 10 bucks you didn't have before. So you got to think that way. Um, but anyway, I was so passionate about that and I wanted to get on here to, um, oh yeah, was on buy tarot cards. Ah! <laughs> that's a big one for me too. That's another bu bullshit, bullshit thing that I had on my, on my monthly, what was I spending my money on was tarot stuff. Oh but then again, though, when you when you have a tarot business, you could use your tarot cards to um, you like you could use the money that you used to spend on your tarot cards. You could use that actually as a tax return because it's part of your business. But anyway, save your receipts for that stuff, too. But anyway, I felt super passionate about all of this and I wanted to get on here to share that with you guys. But um, I don't know. I got to get going now because it's already 1230. So my, my shift started already. <laughs> but I just wanted to get on here and share that with you guys and hopefully um, give you some insight, give you something to think about. Um, if you have questions, you know, let, send me a DM. I love it. I love talking about money. I love talking about budgets. Um, I'm really passionate about it now, especially because the last two years, that is all I've been doing. I have been doing what I can to save money. I have been doing what I can to um, pay off bills. So if you guys need help, if you need tips, advice, or just someone to vent to, I am here. Send me a DM. Um, I'm going to save this replay so that you guys can catch it later on. Those of you who are at work busting your butt. <laughs> and I'm going to go bust my butt right now at work. And I will see you guys later. And like I said, we're going to have that little seance thing on Wednesday. Uh, my parents are magically going on a vacation for like three days. So my husband and I are going to have the house to ourselves for those days. So nice. Um, so I'm going to be doing a little live on that day. So if you can catch up with me, it'll be Wednesday at seven. Um, and what else? I think that's it. So until then, my loves, I will see you guys later and I love you and talk to you guys soon. Bye, my loves.